maybe to start off <clears throat> my first lightning talk so please uh, bear with me it's also my first time at open mobs it's, it's really exciting for me thank you um and i realized that that we have a bit of a different perspective on on the kind of things uh, and the modeling that you're discussing because my perspective is not only on energy but really on the environmental sorry thanks <laughs> So it's on energy, but also on the wider environmental impacts related to the energy and resource flows in the life cycle of buildings. So the focus is buildings. And we come actually from a building level where we do a hierarchical modeling of, of uh, spatial inventories as buildings, elements, work sections, and materials. And then um, apply a complex life cycle model, which is standardized in our context for different life cycle stages related to material use, but also energy use during building operation. And the reason why we are increasingly working on upscaling and why we focus on resources is that previous research, um, global meta-analysis that we did has shown that for new buildings, actually at this point, the energy use and emissions of operation are not the most important thing, but the most important thing are the so-called upfront embodied carbon emissions. So the emissions related to the material use and the material production, um, which we found were increasing um, for highly energy efficient buildings. And when we look at the mitigation time frame until 2050, they are really dominating the picture. So it takes um, more than 30 years until the upfront embodied carbon emissions break even with the operational emissions of buildings. <clears throat> and, and now as we, as we try to um, understand more the implications of this problem at the macro scale, we face two problems. One is the, the high policy relevance of macro scale modeling, but the trade-offs in model resolution and uh, data granularity. And the other thing is that due to these limitations, um, we see that there are incomplete indicator sets being deployed in this kind of analysis, mostly focusing on things like cumulative energy demand and greenhouse gas emissions, um, but leaving out other important indicators that um, yeah, imply the risk of, of not identifying burden shifting between indicators and between life cycle stages. So our proposal, and uh, it's, an, it's an open proposal, so to kind of also fit in here, um, is to understand this problem uh, along a framework that we call space-time indicator framework, which allows us to um, identify and specify the, both the data needs, but also the data availability in terms of the spatial and the temporal resolution and in terms of the indicators that are required to address a certain problem, a certain modeling exercise. And we are proposing a rather straightforward um, data structure based on our previous modeling that allows us to keep a high level of detail from the building level up until the macro level. So we deploy, it's basically pandas based, um, it's, it's a mix of tall and wide data structures, so it's tall for, for the key attributes of spatial and temporal attributes, and then it's wide for the, for the indicator sets that we um, deploy. And we find that it's quite useful in comparison with our previous modeling and also with our previous meta-analysis to, to really have this higher um, level of detail. And the way that we are currently deploying this at the macro scale um, is, for example, in uh, building stock scenario modeling for the EU Commission until 2050, uh, where we use this detailed um, building level data. So we call it SLICE, um, Scalable Lifecycle Engineering and Analysis. Um, and we use that data, um, including the hotspots for materials and lifecycle stages, but then also the resulting carbon profiles to understand what the emissions are for buildings in a given year relating to their new construction, relating to um, operation and maintenance, just operation and energy use, and also replacement or end of life and deconstruction. Um, and that allows us to assess um, different scenarios until 2050, uh, power scenarios, but also decarbonization scenarios, and also including different low carbon solutions or different strategies for decarbonization. And so we've deployed SLICE now in different use cases, ranging from the micro to the macro scale. Um, and there are several steps uh, at the top, it says next steps um, that, that we're working on now. So we want to elaborate this model um, to, to have a higher granularity archetypes per member state. Currently we're modeling Europe as four regions. Um, we also want to include um, carbon reduction and removals. We want to consider dynamic impact characterization and we will further advance our building stock turnover model together with colleagues um, at IASA. Alessio Mastrucci is involved in our uh, new project. And we aim to make the whole scenario modeling tool that will be established this way. Um, we aim to make this open. That's an ongoing discussion that we're having with the commission. They are the client in this project. We proposed it to them. They're interested, but we haven't really got a yes from them at this point. So we will have to work a bit harder. Um, but in any case, there is an open part of the SLICE ecosystem, mostly related to uh, analysis and visualization, uh, different Jupyter notebooks. As I said, they use pandas, uh, they use uh, different visualization libraries. 
And we're also exploring the use of machine learning to, to have a more predictive kind of modeling of these life cycle impacts. And we're exploring the link to other models um, yeah, for different contexts. So the reason why I'm saying this is if you're working on buildings, if you're interested in a life cycle perspective, considering both energy and resource use, please feel free to reach out. I'll be very uh, curious to talk to you and would love to uh, yeah, further advance also on the open science domain in this context. Thanks. <laughs>